Thank you all for coming. I guess the first thing I was supposed to do is introduce myself. Um, I'm Regis Hoffman. I hail from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm a longtime collector of Africa, and especially weird things in Africa. I'm also half Polish. So sometimes as you get older, you start thinking, let's, let's look at my heritage in a way. But Poland really didn't appeal to me. Then I found out that during World War II, there were Polish refugees in Africa. So let's, why not combine the two? My love of Africa, postal history, and my interest in Polish heritage. Now this is a rather obscure area. Uh, a lot of people don't know about it. So what we're gonna go through is why they were there, the camps that were set up, and the postal history involved in this. Not only is it a postal history, but sort of a, a social and historical record of something that was very unusual during the war. So what exactly happened? Where did these poles come from? So when the USSR invaded uh, Poland in World War II, 1.6 million poles were deported to the Soviet Union. But after Germany invaded Poland, all of a sudden the status of these, ref these Polish uh, refugees became very unclear. And the USSR, probably because they didn't want to feed them, decided to grant amnesty uh, to many Polish refugees in the Soviet Union. The problem is they had nowhere to go. So there were arrangements to uh, transport them to Iran, and then basically they were on their own. So if we look at what happened to these Polish refugees, a map here. They started out in Russia. Well, actually, they started in Poland, went to Russia. They were then allowed to go to Iran. From Iran, that's where they started spreading throughout the world. Some went to India, and from India on to New Zealand. Many went from Iran to a staging area in East Africa, uh, where they then spread throughout South, East, and Central Africa. Now, there's also a sidebar to this. Now, I told you I'm from Pittsburgh, and I dabble in uh, Pittsburgh history, Pittsburgh um, memorabilia thrown, thrown through uh, covers of Pittsburgh. Some of the people from New Zealand then went to Santa Rosa, Mexico, where there was a camp. And from this camp, 25 Polish girls who were orphans were sent to an orphanage in Coriopispie, a school operated by the Felician Sisters, which is 20 minutes from where I live. So from Poland to Russia and end up 20 minutes from my house, all as part of the World War II movement of people. I actually did, uh, not from this, but I did meet a woman who was a child was in here. Her story was, we grew up in Poland, her father was a Polish officer, massacred at Katyn Forest. One night, the Soviets come knock on her door, you're leaving for you know, Russia? And she made it. She and her mother made it to Santa Rosa, Mexico, and then a Polish family in Philadelphia sponsored them after the war. And amazingly, she had no bitterness. She was so grateful that she survived, basically. But can you imagine all that happening to a child? So again, the postal history reflects you know, what is happening in the real world. Yes? Regis, what year was this that they went from New Zealand to Mexico? Because I'm assuming that the U.S. was not in a war yet. No, it, they were. They, they were. were. Okay. But remember, Polish refugees, you know, depression still, countries didn't want them. There's more mouths to feed in a way. Okay? But Mexico agreed to accept them. Okay? What, what year is it? Was it uh, Mexico, I'm thinking it was around 43-ish. Be 44. So, so uh, well, I have, I have a cover here. Okay, even though it's not Africa, I think it completes the story. So, there were three way, ray, waves of refugees. Uh, late March, 30,000 military personnel. Uh, then in the next wave, 43,000 military personnel, 25,000 civilians, and later on the third wave. And this Polish wave coming to Iran were sent mainly via Hassad, uh, uh, Havaz in southern Iran, and these two ports, and from there they either went to Africa or India. 
And I mentioned that I dabble in uh, Pittsburgh memorabilia. Here's one that, that covers everything. So this is from APO 680, which is in uh, Avaz, Iran. It's addressed from a soldier to his father in Pittsburgh. Okay, that's nice. But the letter is interesting. Remember, in, this is set in 43. Um, there were 2,800 Polish refugees in uh, Avaz. And it was described as one of the hottest places on earth. The letter inside from the soldier to his dad says this. Had quite a bit of entertainment the last few days. A big dance Friday night with 100 Polish girls providing the female atmosphere. The fact that we speak no Polish and a little English provided many amusing incidents. A soldier there, they had a dance, and the Polish girls came who were refugees sent to his dad in Pittsburgh. So again, I think as postal historians, you can really appreciate uh, the beauty of this letter and the, the contents and the envelope. So that's, again, some historical con uh, context of the refugees. Okay, now let's go into the African phase. About 20,000 Polish refugees came into Africa, and they were settled in camps in Kenya, Uganda, Tanganyika, uh, northern and southern Rhodesia, and South Africa. Most of them were women, children, and men too old to fight. There's a consequence philatelically. These are the people that were less likely to write letters. You know, um, children, probably not literate yet. The women, they had less, you know, not as much education perhaps then. And older men, they hadn't gone through the education system. So uh, postal history is scarce, but it's really easy to identify if you know what you're looking for. So again, let's show a little map here. Again, from Poland to um, uh, Russia to Iran. And the staging area was, uh, came, came through Port of Mombasa then to Nairobi. And from there, they spread to the camps in Kenya, Uganda, Tanganyika, South Africa, and the Rhodesias. But they came in through East Africa. So let's look at an example of a cover from a, a refugee. So again, filled with character. Uh, the return address of the War Relief Services of the National Catholic Welfare Conference in Nairobi. As a uh, religious organization, they were assisting the refugees. So uh, this cover has, is from Nairobi. Um, it has a circular Ken Kenya censor mark. Uh, this organization was responsible for coordinating the relief. And it's actually addressed to a Polish refugee in Livingstone, northern Rhodesia. Because again, this was the staging area. This was sort of the administrative headquarters. So a tremendous cover from within Africa to another refugee. Um, the Polish forces in the Mideast, fairly well known. Um, those Polish forces, if they're military, they may have had family that were refugees in East Africa. So occasionally you'll see from a Polish forces uh, to a refugee in Africa. The important thing here is the Polish delegation in Stanley House, which was a hotel. Sort of like everyone knew that was the name of the hotel. If you need to get a contact with someone in from a Polish refugee, but you didn't know where they were, you wrote to the Stanley House. And the, somehow it would get to them. So that was, the, um, um, that was the headquarters of the Polish delegation. And as she's, oh, I'm sorry, sure. Oh, yes, there's a. Yes, that's registration because it's Polish forces, but an Indian stamp. And you also see that it has Middle Eastern censorship, and it also has Polish censorship. So rich in, rich in history. Do you, do you have a comment on the statement at the bottom, written in Polish? Um, normally, you would do that if there was censorship involved and you want to expedite um, censorship. That way it would go to the Polish censor, not the English, and then a day or two later get to the right one. Um, so here, our, a cover, the reverse has the address, uh, Reverend something, we can't speak Polish too well, at the uh, Nairobi um, Stanley House Polish delegation. Uh, there are many priests and religious involved, and they were the leaders, if you will. Um, so he was... Uh, part of the Polish delegation at Stanley House, the headquarters, and this was to another priest, um, same priest as the previous cover, a Catholic church in Livingstone, northern Rhodesia. 
they're coordinating some of their efforts. And I mentioned before, how do you identify these covers? Well, anytime you see the word written in Polish, that's a signal that this is a Polish refugee cover. If it says Polish delegation, that's a key. I mean, this cover, it's a $2 cover if you find it in a dealer box without this on it. Okay, um, here, the Polish delegation, um, box 22 was the address of the Polish settlement in Nairobi. Uh, this was not a camp, but the headquarters of a staff of about 200 paid people uh, set up by the Polish government in exile. So basically an administrative headquarters for assisting the refugees in, in East Africa. Sent from Great Britain and um, again examined by the censor there. So one, if you will, sidelight of this is not the Polish refugees themselves, but the support and logistical organization set up to assist them. So again, here we see the East Africa Refugee Administration, where it's addressed to, um, addressed to a pole there. So, um, and it's from the Polish Red Cross in Beirut, Lebanon. And this Polish Re Refugee Administration ran the refugee camps. So again, a sort of a sidelight, the uh, logistics and, uh, of the camps and the, the people set out to help them. All right, um, from the Polish consulate in Kampala. Again, not refugees per se, but they were there. There was an organization that was set up. Uh, they could help to assist the um, refugees. Again, you look, Polish uh, consulate here, both in English and Polish, and to aid in the censorship, written in Polish. Yes? Why do some uh, covers have uh, censor tape on them and others not? A uh, couple reasons. Not everything was censored, number one although a majority was. A, a tape, would, tape would normally, if you had to reseal it, okay, if you had to open it and then seal it up again, you could put a tape. Some of these may have both. Um, maybe on the back it has the marking itself. Okay. It's interesting, it's also the princely India for the regime of Hyderabad, too. Okay. Yes. Yes, that would be the sensor number. Okay, I believe it's. The yeah, that's right. I believe that's India. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, again, a nice cut from the infrastructure from the War Relief Services of the National Catholic Welfare Conference to a Polish settlement in southern Rhodesia. And if you see here, uh, um, Emil Drobny, um, he was also the one that two previous covers in northern Rhodesia. So apparently. I'm guessing he was itinerant, maybe going from camp to camp, uh, helping with religious needs, making sure their needs were being met, um, perhaps a leader in, in organizing the camps. Um, Southern Rhodesia had about 6,800 refugees, and there were about 500 at this camp at um, Marandella, Southern Rhodesia, so not many. And the, the, a nice example of an inward, well, actually from one, from one camp to another, if you will, internal usage. Uh, this, another cover with, uh, you know, we're lucky. Uh, again, Emil Drobny, he saved these covers, so thank you for saving these covers. Uh, again, the cachets have much, they're very rich. Uh, War Relief Services of the National Catholic Welfare Conference cachet. And um, this one is from the Roman Catholic Chief Chaplain in Nairobi. Again, adding wonderful character to this. Written in Polish to assist any censorship that was done. So another example, and now he's uh, back in northern Rhodesia. Um, Masinda, Uganda, uh, was the second largest camp in East Africa with only 3,600 people. And it is one of the few that actually had uh, some postal markings indicating it was a refugee camp. So for example, here, the registration label actually reads Polish refugee camp, uh, Masinda, Uganda. You know, most of these don't have a postal indication that it was a refugee camp. Um, and here, there's also a cancel from Masinda, Uganda. Uh, I also mentioned, how do you identify these covers? If they were going overseas, many of them were addressed to um, philanthropic or relief organizations worldwide. So here, 
the National Committee of Americans of Polish Descent. So when you see a cover from Africa addressed to one of these organizations, that's a signal um, that it is actually a Polish refugee cover. But don't use that knowledge on the bourse today until I get out there. Okay. Okay, that, that's great. And, so, and, and this is the only known, only type of registration mark known from any of these camps. Okay, so he, again, uh, this is from Masindi, Uganda. Uh, but this one's interesting because it's addressed to a member of the Polish forces in UK. So again, some of the, you know, the, the, the men went off to fight, but the women and children stayed as refugees. So you can see this type of mail from a camp uh, to a Polish um, uh, officer in England. Oh, actually, go back one. And actually, you can read. It's hard to read, but right there, it does say um, Polish refugee camp, a stamp. But you don't often find that. This is from Fort Hicks? It's after, but yes, these should mention, yes, good point, that these camps remained in existence until about uh, 1950. You know, after the war was over, you know, you had to find places for them. Very few stayed in Africa, although some did. Uh, most tried to immigrate someplace. Okay. Um, so now we'll just look at some examples. Um, uh, Koja Kampala, Uganda, um, a registered cover, and this was a, a fairly large camp, again, large as relative, housing about 2,800 refugees. And... Um, Again, um, if you look on the back, it says, it, well, it's actually this guy is the president of the Polish-American Congress in Chicago. So another clue, Chicago had a large Polish um, community. If you see letters addressed to Chicago, that's a flag that it might be from a Polish refugee. Okay, uh, this is one of the largest camps in Africa, uh, Tangeru or Arusha Tanganyika. Um, <coughs> And again, the return address is the key. It just from a there's a Polish last name, and these are known camps, so it is from a, a Polish refugee. Um, inward covers are scarcer, but they can't do find are found. So this is from a uh, the Polish uh, FPO 116 in Italy. It's a member of the Polish forces, and it's actually the the address of the camp uh, does say. Um, is a Polish name, Polish camp, written in Polish. That's, that's the signal, what it is. And again, it was, has Polish military censorship here. It has British military censorship here. And, you know, British stamps, uh, but the um, uh, Polish FPO cancel. Um, again, uh, this is a um, very small and isolated camp having only about 500 Poles. Uh, Kondoa Aringi, Tanganyika, and the only way you show that it's a, um, a refugee cover is the address, American Relief for Poland in Chicago. So that's, the, that's the key, and then you match it with the cancel. Uh, this is a very isolated camp. Um, Kidugala, Najambi, Tanganyika, um, and it's a very isolated camp with about 1,100 refugees, and again, you look at the Polish name, and this is a known camp in East Africa. Um, Dar es Salaam, the capital of Tanganyika, did not actually have a camp, but it had the Polish consulate and a handful of Poles doing business and organizing relief efforts. Um, so uh, here, again, looking at the address, it's you know sent to the official organ of the Polish Women's Alliance of America, so seeking you know, some assistance. Um, interesting here is that Nieri Station, Kenya, was actually the location of an Italian evacuee, evacuee camp after the war's end. Um, there were Italians from Italian Somaliland that were interned from the war in Kenya. The war is over. Uh, this was a camp near a station to send them back. But interestingly enough, there is a Polish person there. So my belief is that even though it was, quote, the Italian um, evacuee camp, it was really a refugee 
evacuee camp. That they're pulling, it was set up to be able to ship uh, or transport people back to Europe. So here's an example um, from that camp from a Polish refugee possibly going back to Poland. What year is that? Uh, 47. Okay. So again, even though the war was over, you, know, you, didn't, you, you just didn't turn the light off and everything was back to normal. It took years to get people back. Um, here is a, an example from uh, Lusaka, northern Rhodesia. Uh, this camp held about uh, 1,200 Polish refugees. And again, it's to our Reverend Drobny again. And here it's going to him at the camp in Marandellis, southern Rhodesia. From, so from the camp in northern Rhodesia to a camp in southern Rhodesia. Uh, Livingstone, northern Rhodesia, was an elite camp. Um, of 100 families. And again, this is how you tell. Polish name, that's the only way you can find. Oh, and written in Polish, that's the signal. Uh, Southern Rhodesia, um, this only had 550 refugees. So again, our famous father Drobny uh, from Salisbury, Southern Rhodesia to the camp in um, Marandellis. So from one small camp to another. So I'm guessing he was going from camp to camp. And uh, th thankfully, he, his, he saved his correspondence. But to put this in perspective, 80% of these covers I bought at Colopex 25 years ago when a, a Polish dealer from Columbus, someone had been, sold him a lot of these. And I bought a lot of, that's it. <laughs> Ever since then, I think I've added like 10 covers. They're not that common. One cover from South Africa. So this is from a pole in Cape Town, South Africa, to a pole in Rongai, Kenya, uh, which only had 1,500 people. Um, Post-war use, 1947. And does anyone read Polish? I think someone translated this for me saying, I think it may have been a reading saying, hey, the war's over, you know, how are you type thing. But again, from a pole in South Africa, and this is the only example I have, to a pole in East Africa. Uh, even though this is not part of Africa, I think we have to complete the story. So there were camps in India also. So remember, if you were in Iran, you got to go to either East Africa or you got to get to go to India. Okay? Uh, so here's from a poll in India. And here we see the, uh, the way you tell what's the DR used Polish camp, but Polish camp in uh, Valvide something. Um, so that's an example of um, a Polish uh, refugee in India. Um, and finally, Santa Rosa, Mexico. That was it. You ended up, if you didn't like New Zealand, you can't, remember, you're trying to get the, the US, right? That was the best place to be. And the way you tell, I mean, this cover looks, you know, cellophane seal that's falling off, a boring stamp, indistinct cancel. But the key is, it says Santa Rosa, Polish name, and look who it's addressed to, General Kozlat of Poland. That's the key, that this is a refugee in Santa Rosa, Mexico. Okay. I have found two of these. They're again, very scarce, but they're generally in dealers' miscellaneous boxes because it's a, without all this, that covers it. 50 cents, something like that. Um, you can also expand just a little bit beyond uh, the exact uh, confines of World War II uh, and look at the war relief that occurred after World War II. Right? There's still problems. So here's another, just another uh, interesting cover from the um, American-Polish War Relief uh, of the United States in Geneva, Switzerland. And he's writing to... Uh, Commissioner for Refugees of the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland. So it's a nice sort of closure cover, si signaling that even though the war was over, there were still refugees sort of in ill-defined Ill states. You know, there's maybe still in East Africa. They haven't had have a rent home. They're not going back to Poland, obviously. They didn't want to do that. So it's an, a nice closure item for this, uh, this topic. And that is the end of my slideshow. So I hopefully you enjoyed... 
a talk in a relatively obscure area of Africa. It's nice because it combines Eastern European history or Central European history with Pan-Africa, not just East, Central, or Southern Africa. It's also a story of real people's lives that were seriously affected by World War II. So thank you for your attention. Okay. Yes. Um, I went to a talk by a Holocaust survivor in, in Iowa a year or so ago. And they were from Poland. And they were uh, sent to the Soviet Union and into a gulag there. And from the gulag in the Soviet Union, they went to Iran as mm -hmm. well. Okay. And finally made their way to the United States. So that seems to be quite the, the root of many. Yes, uh, and very uh, fortunate they were allowed out. Because literally it was one, here's the last ship leaving, get on it or you know, who knows what happens to you. <laughs>